Hi, I'm Cory. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's squirrel video is brought to you by yesterday's video and then a question that I or a request I'd received a while ago on how I make these um, either bookmark or belly bands with a place to write, a journaling place, an embellishment cluster kind of a thing. And uh, so I'd wanted to honor that request. It's been on my list, my to-do list for a while. And yesterday when I was showing you guys my die cuts, they were a mess. And so after the video, I had to put them away. And then I realized, well, you know what? It makes more sense to put my Tim Holtz people in this than leaving my die cuts because it wasn't working great and this is a good fit. So I pulled them out and then I had to put them away. And then I thought, well, before I put them away, I might as well finish some because I had a lot that were um, unfinished. Most of them were just the plain old here. I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull it out. Most of them were just these plain old white pieces and I hadn't done any um, inking or painting or embellishing or what have you. So I, before I put them away, I started to ink them and color them and a combination of doing that. And I've got a video that shows how I do it, but basically I take the white one and then I either use Tim Holtz ink. Most of the time it's um, peeled paint and faded moss, I think. To, to color the stems, and then I use a variety of the inks for the flower petals. And then when that's completely done, I use embossing powder, or um, um, embossing ink, clear embossing ink, and then Seth After Vintage Beeswax embossing powder. And that's how, that's how they get shiny. And it's a couple people asked how I get my things shiny. So they're either shiny through the Seth After Vintage Beeswax, or they're shiny because of the Nouveau Deluxe Crystal, or Nouveau Crystal Glaze. So those are the, the products. And so I was putting those away and I thought, well, I, you know what, I might as well just finish them up. And some of these are done with ink pens and, um, you know, I use pens to color the leaves and the stems, but most of them are done with um, the Tim Holtz ink, Distress ink, that's what I use, like this. This is just Tim Holtz Distress ink rubbed on there and then embossed okay so again i'm showing how squirrel occurs so as i was putting these away and finishing these up i remembered the request that i'd had a while ago to ship whoops something fell oops sorry about that um request i'd had a while ago on how to make this and and what my process was so i thought i would kind of do some of those today and i thought well since i'm got them out and i'm working on them I might as well do them. And that reminds me about a question that um, somebody had the other day. And it, I could be wrong. It's entirely possible. Because with junk journaling, some, some terms are pretty straightforward, but some are pretty interchangeable. I consider an embellishment something that goes on top, like, um, oh gosh, where did I put them? The clusters, here we go. Those clusters that I showed the other day. Um, I consider that an embellishment because I am making something to decorate something, right? So this cluster itself doesn't necessarily have a functional purpose other than to decorate something else. In this case, oh, I made cards for um, the people that win the drawing from, from yesterday's video. But all I made, put them all on cards, but the clusters themselves didn't really serve a functional purpose other than an embellishment to make it look pretty. Whereas, a, so an embellishment to me is something decorative. And ephemera is, well, sometimes we use the word ephemera two ways, or maybe there's more, I don't know, but I use it two ways. Sometimes ephemera is um, the pieces that I make to tuck things in, but most of the time when I consider ephemera, um, I usually call these what they are, like cards or belly bands or tucks or folds or what have you. But the ephemera is usually the vintage, though it doesn't have to be, bits and pieces that we put in, like the um, vocabulary cards or cigarette cards or old checks or guest checks or library cards. Those are some of my favorite uh, playing cards. That's what I consider ephemera. So. Uh, and maybe other people use it a little bit differently, but for me, embellishments are the decorative pieces. Ephemera are the little bits that I usually put inside, and then just whatever pieces it makes. We call, we call it making ephemera, and, and, and we do, but we're making items to put inside our journals to add interest and interactiveness and that type of thing. So that's kind of how I use it. And 
while I've got these here, I will show you really quickly what I did. So I decided that um, I had a couple of people say, please sign it. So I just used my stamp rather than signing it. And all of those bits that I, sh the cluster um, plan basically that I showed you how to make yesterday or in the previous video, because some of you aren't watching this sub sequentially. So anyway, the, the clusters, my formula for clusters basically, I put them on top of cards. One, so that it'd be easier to mail, and two, so that you could use it as a card if you wanted to, a journal in space, because I didn't write anything inside. You can just tuck it in your journal, or if you prefer to, if you want to use it some other way, well, you could tear this piece off and sew it or tuck it, glue it down on two or three sides. If you wanted to glue it on two sides, you've got a tuck. If you wanted to do three sides, you've got a pocket, right? So even though I put it on a card, that doesn't mean you have to use it that way. You're welcome to use it however you want to. You could take this piece off and then there that's a journaling card. So the card itself gives you a choice of how you want to use it. So I put each of the clusters that we made on top of a card. So an embellishment on top of uh, just a simple card and then you can use it however you choose to in, in your journal or your projects or inspiration or what have you. So I'm kind of quickly going through. You saw most of these yesterday. Like these were really grungy, but I didn't, I felt, felt like they needed something more. So when I put it on a card, I put it on top of the lace. But again, you can just, if you want just to use the cluster, just peel this whole thing up and, and you can use it that way. So it still gives you lots of, lots of options that way. Okay. And I don't remember if I made, you know what? I had the bit leftover bits on my desk. And so I took those and made another one. I don't know, there's 20 something or, or what have you. Uh, this one was just a little bit different because that was a card base that I had. But m most of these cards, basically, I just grabbed um, a six by six pad or a couple six by six pads. And these are six by six pads folded over. And, and that was that was my method um, for, for the bases of the clusters. OK, so we're almost done with those. Oops, this one goes this way. And then that's the last of the purple. This one, I used two six by six cards because of the size of this piece. And it was kind of fun. But again, it's the same idea. You can use it however you choose to. Now this one, um, I didn't know I did. I'd make it a card. There was one that I didn't make it into a card. But again, you can pull the tag off this if you choose to or, or do whatever you want or make this a belly band. Or actually, you know, you could just glue down, glue, 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 right? Glue it down on three sides and then you can have a tuck in the bottom and then you open it up and you've still got a place to journal and you can make this into a belly band or a tuck or whatever you choose to. So, you know, other ways and options to use it. And this is one of the ones that I showed you, you know, the two choices, basically. Oh, here's the other one. So I ended up making both of them. I just used more of that scrap paper and ended up making both of them into these three by six cards. I may have trimmed some of them down as needed. This one, because I had um, made the back available to journal if, if you chose to, I made this one into a little tuck pocket so that you could, I didn't want to glue this back down onto a card, but still. There you go, same idea. All right, so those are the the clusters and how I use those. Now I prepped this a little bit, so hopefully it won't take too terribly long. This was one, and I think it was the Take Flight journal that I did for Tracy Fox, either that or the Yellow Wildflower journal. I And I've done them in some of the little itty bitty mini ones, the, the using the Tim Holtz paper into smaller sizes. I've, I mean, I'm not the only one by any means that makes these. But I had been asked how to do it, and since I had a bunch of these die cuts. Now, I use die cuts, but you, you certainly don't have to. You can put any embellishment you want on. But I'm going to show you my formula. And basically what this is, is it's a bookmark, right, with a, I don't even know what to call that, an arm at the top to tuck in a journaling spot. So this particular one, I can pull it out of the pocket or whatever paper clip into my journal and I've got a space to write back here and then I've got this flip up and I can write here here and on the back so I can paper clip this in my journal I can use this as a belly band in the middle of my page and then just glue it on the top and bottom and then I've got a, another tuck back here I can take this out and just put a little notepad there and I do that sometimes so you can really make these work for whatever you want or need. And I made a couple samples. So this one, this is a Tim Holtz die cut. And then this is 
it's almost the same exact idea, you know, with just different lace scraps at the top. And I sew these down simply because um, it's a little bit flatter. So almost the same idea, but this is a Carrie Witchcraft Do You Do, one of those die cuts. So it's Witchcraft Do You Do, and she's in Australia, and um, she's got really great laser dies. But you can see it's same concept, similar design, little tiny bit different look. And then this one, I made it a little bit longer. So again, I'd probably make this one a belly band and, um, you know, for a longer journal. And same idea, it's got journaling space on the front and back. Now this one I didn't cover in the back because I'd probably make it a belly band. But if I wanted to make this as just a regular bookmark, before I put my lace on, I would just put a piece of cardstock or journaling paper or what have you on the back of it. So there it is longer. And then these for the littler dies, for the littler die cuts, I should say, I just, I made a little one, same, same exact idea, same concept, but I just made it shorter. And so if I were to use this in a small journal or, um, and I backed this one so it could be used as a journaling card, in a small journal or just a little pocket of a journal, but still the same idea, just a holding piece and then a flip over card and a die cut and lace. And then this one is just slightly different because I thought, why not? So instead of having a place where this flips over, I just use the same exact, you know, lace, die cut, label concept with these strips. And then I made just a regular old bookmark. So this one doesn't have that flip up, but it's, you know, using the same exact product. So if I've got this out and I'm mass making a bunch of these, well, maybe I'll switch it up a little bit and make something like this. Okay, and I will show you how that's done. Again, these, these are all done essentially the same way the die cuts. And I've got a video or two that um, shows how it's done, but die cut them on white scraps of cardstock. And then I'll use either an ink pen, any non-permanent ink pen, or most often what I'll use is the Tim Holtz rain, um, Distress ink, and then I'll color it. And like this particular one, I didn't color those white pieces. I just left them blank and colored just the green. And then when I put the embossing powder and the Seth after vintage beeswax, it gives you those little um, color variations. That's what the embossing powder does. So it kind of gives you that, that cool look. And all of them are done essentially the same way. Okay, so that one's not quite dry. So I, I even ink some up in advance. Now, oh, that was another thing I was gonna show you. This one and this one, I, I didn't sew this one at all. And this one, I only sewed the two papers together. I didn't sew around the edge. Whereas these, I sewed around the edge. So you can sew on this if you like to sew, but it, does, it doesn't require it. It's absolutely not an essential step. And just for the sake of speed, the one I'm gonna show you, I am not gonna sew. And so I my measurements on these generally are I use one inch strips of colored or um, patterned paper. And this can be either cardstock, like this is a Tim Holtz cardstock, or your digitals. This is a great use for digitals. Okay, so I usually use one, a strip of one inch wide cardstock. It, it, can, it can be one and a quarter, it can be two. It's completely up to you, but I usually just go with that because like I said, I'm gonna mass make. And then I will make a two inch section of pattern paper. And um, uh, sometimes it's just a regular pattern. I don't mean paper, I mean cardstock. Sometimes like this is a Swiss dot cardstock and this is braille paper. And a lot of times I'll have a texture on there, uh, you know, a subtle texture just because I like it. So two inch strips, one inch strips, and then I'm an inker so I inked everything. I just saved you, saved you that step. But I'll do it in a, a bunch of different kinds. So maybe like, um, you know, I've got a little bit of red in here, so maybe if I were working with a red die cut, I would choose this one just to pick up that little bit of, I don't know, deep red that it has. So, I, you know, have a variety ready to go. And then these are half inch strips of just another patterned paper. These happen to be Tim Holtz and I've inked them, but, but you don't certainly don't have to. So Tim Holtz inked edge pattern paper, right? one half inch strips, one inch strips, two inch strips. That's my formula, alter it as, as you need. And then I'll glue, and it doesn't matter if I, you know, you glue it on the right or the left, I've got some each way. I'll glue the one inch strip on top of the two inch strip. Okay, 
so glue that down now this is probably long and I'll trim it and so I, I really want the texture that the braille bumps give me so I'm going to well you can see one's longer than the other I just used the off cuts that I've got and that happened to be the size so I'll, I'll glue it down and I'm working with cardstock on cardstock so art glitter glue is a good choice or reptile glue or barely art glue or alines if that's what you use whatever you use if I'm going to sew I will sew I'll, I'll glue a whole bunch of these and then I'll sew right down here on the edge all the way on a whole bunch of them um, and then I'll sew around the edge when I'm done later on but I'll do that step first just to you know if I'm going to sew for this one I'm not going to these are okay so that's this piece and let me trim it down because we'll just go with the length here there we go so I'll trim it down so it looks like a bookmark basically or a belly band or, or what have um, and I didn't because I trimmed it there's no ink there we go ink all right then my next step is to put um, here I'll use this one and I use about three quarters of an inch so if this is going to be the top of my bookmark right this is going to be the top For about three quarters of an inch down is where I start mine and that gives me a little bit of room here to either punch a hole or punch a slot for lace and a little bit of clearance at the bottom but you can always trim this piece later if you need to but that's just my measurement if you want it a little bit closer do a half inch um, here's one I wanted to try a little bit farther and this one is probably about an inch see so you can see how far up this flap piece goes will depend on where you put your holding strip and again just be mindful that however you, you be, be aware of where you're placing this piece okay so I will get my inked piece and I'll lay it on my work surface and I usually like I said do it about three quarters of an inch so in my case it's going to be right about here and I don't remember if that's the side that I inked but I think so and then what I'll do is I fold these edges over now can you do it exactly the length absolutely this does give you a little bit more bulk I guess but I like the way it sits when it's wrapped around as opposed to just cut off you can cut it off to make it fit flush or you can wrap it around I just feel like it's a little sturdier when I wrap it around and then when I glue it on the back right before I put if I'm if I'm gonna make this a regular bookmark when I'm done I would put um, another piece of paper on the top so these flaps will be hidden and I'll use my I'll score it zoom in a little bit and alter there we go okay so I'll use my grid marks to make sure that it's kind of mostly where I want it now it doesn't have to be exact by any means but I, I like about three quarters of an inch drop so then I'll just use my grid move it down to where I want it make sure it's straight and then I'll glue these flaps down hold it for a second and uh, that should be about about three quarters of an inch yeah it is it's just about three quarters of an inch again if you choose to you can cut it straight there and so you have nothing on the back but um, I don't know I think it makes it a little bit sturdier so glued down I don't have any glue on this end or this end so my my flip my little fold over flip can fit completely inside this right tuck down okay then that's then my next step I use off cuts again of pattern paper I don't mean pattern paper I don't I don't mean pattern paper this one is a cardstock that has fleckles in it and it's really pretty so it I just use this like it is because it's got those those color flecks in it this is just an off cut of coffee dyed paper and when I'm just when I'm using an off cut of coffee dyed paper you can see here I've got lightly stamped text on this as opposed to this now this one's wider because this was happened to be this wide but most of these I cut to one and a half inches so pattern paper one inch background paper usually cardstock textured two inches little strips half inch and these these offcuts I cut to one and a half inches now if I'm using one like this I'll use it exactly like this I don't add any ink or any text to it well other than inking the edges 
But if I'm using one like this, what I'll often do is get a background stamp and any background stamp uh, will work. I like words on this because I don't have words on these two pieces. And as evidenced by previous videos, I like the combination of text with pattern with um, uh, texture. So I will get my text stamp and this one I believe is a Tim Holtz but there's a gazillion text stamps so any text stamp will work and then I'll use that I use um, walnut stain most of the time so I'll ink up my my stamp pad and I don't want it to be dark so if I were to well you know what I'll do it because this is just a scrap um, I'm, not, I'm not the one I'm using so if I got a strip right I'm gonna fold my strip over because I don't need stamp on all of it I only want stamp on part of it so that I can have more room to write okay so I'll fold it over and then I will stamp now normally you can see here on my stamp off pad I stamp off first and I'm going to show you why okay and let's see there we go I made it. see now this is a whole this is a first generation stamp and it's a whole lot darker than this this is a more subtle background texture and and I only do tell you that because you can use whichever look you prefer but you can see that this makes um, uh, when I finished building my cluster that background stands out a lot and maybe that's what you want maybe you want the background to stand out a lot but I prefer the background to be a little bit more subtle as a general rule though it worked just fine there so I stamp second generation stamp and so you know, you stamp off on your pad, you're, you stamp it the first time, and you don't want this to be perfect or super clear, so it doesn't matter if your, um, if your image is perfect. Uh, in fact, you pretty, pretty much prefer not to. Um, yeah, this is fine. So again, I'll fold it over, and this one's a little bit smaller than the other ones, because again, I'm using just off cuts. So I'll fold it over. Now remember, I've already stamped this once, so the next time I stamp it, it'll be a little bit lighter. And I'm sorry, the acrylic block is flashing off the, the ceiling light. So when I stamp it again, it's a little bit lighter. Here you can see next to each other. And I can probably even get a third generation stamp out of that. It just changes changes the look. And, you know, play with it. Do what you, what you like. So this is my strip. Well, it's not on this one but because I'm using a longer one. But this is the piece that's going to go over here. Right? Just strip, cut off strip, fold it in half. All right, and in this particular case, I am using this one simply because I had it ready. All right, so I've got my fold over strip ready. Then I glue on my next section. And the reason I'm not sewing it is so that I don't have a sewing machine line down here. I want to be able to use this for writing if I choose to. When I have little bits of scraps of leftover lace, what I'll do is I will just, like some people would do with the ruffles, I'll just start laying strips in my sewing machine and just sew up a whole bunch. This is old tool. This is a trim on a dress that had a big old hole in it. And this is some um, a cut off of sari silk, just a little bit of sari silk ribbon that I had left. So I sew, sew up a whole bunch of these, you know. And if I'm using a small one like this, right, I'll just cut this, this piece right in half and use, um, where's the other one? Oh, here it is. So I'll use, I cut, took one of those, cut it in half, and I'll use half on each. But basically, I'll just take one of these strips and glue it right on top. Now, if I were going to back this with something, I could certainly sew it down and it would stay really well. But I'll just put a strip of Fabri-Tac and put, I just put my lace down kind of in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but kind of in the middle. Let that dry. Fabri-Tac takes a second to dry. And then I'll take my die cut. I had grabbed this one, but any, any of the die cuts that I've done. So this is one of my decorated die cuts. And honestly, I almost always use Art Glitter Glue or Tim Holtz Distress, uh, oh, you know, this stuff, collage medium. Just because it holds well. And I know you can use Art um, Fabri-Tac for this, but I just prefer this. So that's what I do. So put a little bit of glue on it, make sure it's not too full so it doesn't come out and the nice thing about using old lace like this is it, the color kind of blends together so if a little tiny bit of glue comes out it, it really doesn't show 
and then I push it down. And a lot of times what I'll do while I'm going on to another piece or another thing is I'll use my acrylic block, maybe not the part with the stamp on it, but I'll put my acrylic block down and let that dry. And while I'm doing that, I guess I can do this piece. So right here in the center, now all of mine have that uh, tab slot and that's what this is on Amazon. It is a, oh gosh, those badges that we wear, lit name, name badge, hole punch, label hole punch, something like that. I believe it's like a name badge hole punch and it gives you that slot look. And so I will just come and push a slot and then I'll grab, I don't know, here's some, some frayed, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank on what these are called. I love these things. Um, there's a name for this and it'll come to me cotton something frayed cotton ragged cotton mm, can't believe I'm drawing a blank on it but whatever I, you can use this or you can use a scrap of lace or you can use here this is kind of pretty this is a scrap of lace and then I don't have to remember what that stuff's called and I'm gonna yell it out in just a little bit but um uh, you know a little end piece of sari silk you, you can use any of those things maybe you can use use two so I'll put those in there and then, like I said, I run it through my sewing machine, but that's just my preference, um, just because it makes it mostly flat. But you can you can do what you choose, whatever you know, whatever you prefer to sew that down. And I think you know this one's got two pieces on it. It's a little bulky for me, so I'd probably just do something like this, and just use the sari silk and sew it right across the top. All right, and then this should be dry by now. And this piece. Mm, Oh, I know what it was that dropped. That loud sound we heard earlier, that was my scissors. Okay. So I'll put this right in here. And then I almost always add a Tracy label to the bottom just because I like the look of a Tracy label. If you don't like Tracy labels, um, this one, I used one of those Tim Holtz word stickers practice kindness and then I used a Tim Holtz rub on here so you don't have to this is a, a bigger Tracy label just because I liked the size reference this is a smaller Tracy label so you can just put any old thing there and the one of the reasons I like it you could use you know what and I think I will just because we can you can put a bit instead of adding a label or in addition to adding a label you can use a little bit of washi tape and maybe I would use a little bit of washi tape. I don't really have anything that shade of blue or green, but I could use like the brownish color, I guess. That would work with the ink that I used. So I could just put um, something to kind of like hold it in place or anchor it down and I'll do this. And then if I wanted to add a label on top, I certainly could. So I'll use this little strip of, this is kind of like a coppery brown. And then just tear off a little bit of this and I think this I either got at Michael's or, or um, Hobby Lobby or Joanne or something like that it's you know really common washi it's just thin okay and if I had a dark blue one I'd probably use that but I don't have a dark blue one and so there you go see so it's kind of like anchored in place oh you know what else I could do is a little bit of this um, this vintage cellophane tape that we made this faux cellophane this faux old cellophane. Let's just tear down a little bit of that. And oh yeah, that's kind of cool. I like the look of that together. Trim it off. And there we go. So, and that, whoops, I didn't sew it, but it would be sewn down at the top. And that is, that is how you make these. Okay, so that is, I don't even know what those names are. Bookmark, belly band, with a writing spot. I, I don't even, they probably have a name and I just don't know what it is. And I'm sure somebody else somewhere has done this, but you know, uh, I don't know where I've seen it. Probably Jibbid. Honestly, most most of my ideas originate with Jibbid Neary. So, so there you go. That That is how we make those. One other question that I got, I think I answered most questions online, but one other question that I got is, um, 
I believe this is Tapeology. Now, I don't know it. I showed this the other day and somebody asked me if I could link and some a couple of people asked where I got it. I believe it's Tapeology, but I might be, it could be one of the other companies that is similar to Tapeology. I honestly don't know. You know, it's the same concept as these. These happen to be vellum and some of these are paper and some of these are vellum, but it's, it's the same idea. And I, it's, I've had these a while, so I won't swear to it, but I do believe it is Tapeology. It looks like the cover's off, so I have no idea what the name of this product is, but they're little, what, they're two and a half, uh, two and a quarter by one and a quarter. So they're two and a quarter by one and a quarter little, little bits. And uh, another question, I, I, two other things, real quick, super quick. All right, these packages arrived today, these... Um, mailing labels from the post office. They don't carry them in stock at my post office, but this is what I use to mail the ink boxes. So all the ink boxes will either go out tonight if the machine's not down or tomorrow. And either, to, yeah, probably late tomorrow, I'll know for sure, but I've cut some more, so I'll be able to put a few more in there for those of you who weren't able to get them the first go round. So thank you for that. And another question, the last one that um, I got is, die cuts, die cuts. A lot of times I'll use the, the Sim, Tim Holtz Sussex die cuts, but Simon Says Stamps make them as well. And then these were on clearance at Hobby Lobby and these work great. These are small that you could just cut them in white and you can color them and layer them as you choose. Sorry about that glare. But these, you know, for just a few bucks, um, these are great. This is a great size, especially for the smaller ones. You can use just the leaves. You can use just the stems. You can use a combination. You can make it, you know, any way you want. So if you have access to a Hobby Lobby, do check and see if maybe some of these products are on clearance. And uh, I, had to, I had to get this one simply because there's a flamingo on there. And there's a sweet lady named Deb that we adore tormenting with flamingos. Oh, and then... Google eyes, my two-year-old granddaughter. Google eyes are the thing. So anyway, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope that um, answered your questions. And as always, I will do my best to respond. If you do have additional questions, just put them in the box below. Take care and happy creating.